Hello and welcome to Waveform Science. I'm Jeff Hagen. Tonight we're going to take a look at Bluetti's DC charging enhancer. I have one right here that I picked up over Black Friday. We're going to figure out what it is, why it is, how it works, run it through a bunch of benchmarks, and also figure out whether or not it fits into your solar charging infrastructure needs. Okay, before we do anything else, let's open the box and see what we've got inside. This is how it arrived from the U.S. Postal Service. Let's open it up. Let's see what's in there. It just comes in a plastic, uh, plastic bag, basically. And inside the bag we have a white colored box, bloody logo on the side. DC charging enhancer written on the top. Let's open this up. You can see the uh, box actually got kind of dinged up on uh, its way to my uh, address. But Bluetta usually puts a lot of packing, good packing stuff in there. So what do we have inside? We've got a certificate and a manual. Very nice. We have some closed cell foam. We have DC charging enhancer itself. Enclosed in a plastic bag. Grab the bag. There's the DC charging enhancer itself. There's the specs for it written on the back. On one side we have an 8mm cord, not removable, that's permanently attached. On the other side, we have an XT90 input. We have a fan and a fan on the opposite side. And there's a light right there that'll turn on later when we go to use it. What else do we have in the box? We, of course, have our Do Not Eat gel to keep it, keep it nice and dry. And we have another bag here. This bag has inside of it a car charging cord. It's got the XT90 connector here. It'll allow us to attach the uh, DC charging enhancer to anything that has a cigarette lighter output. And we have MC4 solar connectors also with the MC4 output. And that's it. That's all that's in the box. How much does it weigh? The DC charging enhancer alone without any attached cables weighs in at 1.7 pounds according to this scale. What are the dimensions of the DC charging enhancer? We are looking at 9 inches in that direction, 5 inches, by about 2 and a quarter inches. The attached cable is 3 feet long. So what exactly is a DC charging enhancer? Put simply, the DC charging enhancer is a solar version of the AC power bricks that Bluetti ships with their devices. Here we have the T400 adapter. This is the original version that came, doesn't have a fan in it, charges at 400 watts. This is the T500 power brick. This one charges at 500 watts and does have a fan in it. And this is the DC charging enhancer. You can see that they're very similar in design when you compare them side by side with the T500. Very similar, exactly the same size almost. Yeah, in fact, exactly the same case size. One is gray and one is black, so you can easily tell the difference. The T500 has an AC input. The DC charging enhancer has a DC input. But any place that you would use the T500 adapter, you can also use the DC charging enhancer. So that's actually quite useful. Let me get into some details here. So where can you plug in the DC charging enhancer? On the larger Bluettis, here I have an AC200 Max. The AC200P has the same inputs. And on their batteries, this is a B230 battery. They also make a B300 battery and a B300S battery. All three batteries and both versions of the AC200, in fact, excuse me, all three versions of the AC200, have inputs that are compatible with the DC charging enhancer. The, it's labeled on the battery itself, adapter input. 
And the same on the AC200 Max, it says adapter input. So this can plug in where you'd normally plug in your charger, right here, which isn't going to do anything because I don't have any power going yet. Or you can plug it into the battery here. Now the cool thing about that is you can add extra solar panels to any of these inputs. In fact, you can run them all simultaneously, which means on an AC200 Max right here, I have my main solar input controller. That's 900 watts. On an AC200P, that would be 700 watts into the main solar input. However, I can add into the AC adapter port here a DC charging enhancer. This DC charging enhancer will give you another 500 watts, and they can both run at the same time. So that gives me 900 watts here, and then another 500 watts here for a total of 1400 watts into the AC200 Max. Now, if I attach a B230 battery, I can put another DC charging enhancer down here into this input, and it will in fact work in parallel. And you can actually have multiple of these connected at the same time. So every time you add another battery, you get another 500 watts of solar with the B230s. The B300s have a 200 watt solar controller built in, but you can add a B230, excuse me, you can add a uh, DC charging enhancer to the B300 battery, and that will get that up to a total of 700 watts of solar. 500 from the uh, DC charging enhancer, another 200 from the built-in controller. With the new B300S battery that ships with the AC500. That one has a 500 watt solar controller built into the battery, but it can also take a DC charging enhancer, which will give you a full kilowatt of solar in addition to the built-in controller per battery which means the more batteries you add, the more solar you get. Give me just a moment and I'm going to demonstrate this. Okay, here I have a DC charging enhancer. This is hooked up to my big power supply. Uh, this will provide up to 35-ish uh, amps at up to 150 volts, which is way more than we need for this test, but basically means we're not going to overload it. I also have a voltmeter here. This is the output voltage of the DC charging enhancer. You can see the input voltage coming from the power supply is 36 volts. The output voltage is 59.4-ish volts coming out of it. So you can see that this is definitely an MPPT controller. It's outputting a higher voltage than it's getting in. Okay, so once I plug this into the solar generator itself, let's do that now. There we go, we've got that plugged in it's going to char start a charging cycle. And I do mean a charging cycle. We'll cover that in a few minutes. So now it's going to pull, it's pulling 8.8 .8 amps from its source. That's going to peg up to about 10 amps in a second here. There we go. 10 amps. That's what it's going to pull. Our voltage has dropped just a tiny bit. We're now at 54 volts. And we are showing charging on the screen here at... 340, 340 watts, roughly. There is a fan in the DC charging enhancer. You can hear it running here. How loud is the fan? About 56 decibels. If you've got a T500 adapter, it's about the same. So what do I mean about this being a charger? This is not actually just a straight AC adapter. Um, in the corner here, you're seeing a lithium iron phosphate charging graph. So this is the voltage versus amperage. If you were to put a lithium iron phosphate battery onto a battery charger. Now, this is showing a graph that I have measured from this, this particular DC charging enhancer. This is not a graph from Bluetti. This is something that I measured over time. This is the charging profile graph in both voltage and amperage of the DC charging enhancer you can clearly see that it is following pretty much exactly the same graph as a lithium iron phosphate charger. What that means is that this DC input over here on the side of your AC500 and on the side of your B230 battery, that is a direct path to the battery. There's no charging circuitry in the device. The charging circuitry is actually in the brick itself. So you cannot replace one of these charging bricks with a straight DC adapter, which means if I were to plug this power supply straight into that input over there, it's not going to work. 
you have to have a DC charging enhancer in order to get the battery to actually charge because the charging smarts, the circuitry that actually charges the battery, is inside the enhancer itself. Okay, I've moved things around a little bit to better show the uh, expandability and how you can add more solar panels from each DC charging enhancer. For this test, I have two DC charging enhancers. Both of these are running to my big power supply. This big power supply can do about 35 amps up to 150 volts. We won't need anywhere near that for this test. So for the AC200 Max itself, what do we have? We are at... 68 percent. You can see I have one extra battery plugged in. The B230 is at 85 percent. The built-in battery is at 52 percent. So we're going to start charging this from the DC charging enhancers. So first I'm going to plug in one DC charging enhancer. I'll plug that into the AC200 Max itself into the AC input port. Give it a second to find the adapter. 31 volts going into it, so not a very high voltage. In fact, let's uh, bump this voltage up just a little bit. The fan is kicked on. And we're at more of a respectable 40 volts ish. There we go, 40 volts. So that's running into the input on the AC200 Max. And we are seeing a charging rate here of. 395 watts coming in from the grid. Now, why is it coming in from the grid? Because the DC charging enhancer is going into the grid input right here. So the label on the UI where it says grid, it's actually talking about this connector. It's not so much talking about AC versus DC. It's talking about this connector. That's what that means. And you can see out of my power supply, I'm pulling 10 amps. Now, let's plug in the second DC charging enhancer. So we plug in another one. That's going to go right into the input on the side of the battery. Give it a second to figure it out. And now, instead of pulling 10 amps, pulling darn near 20 amps. Okay? So we're actually pulling twice as much after I've plugged in the second DC charging enhancer. Now, the extra charging input is not going to display on the screen it's going to show exactly the same number it was. Why is it showing exactly the same number? That's because the UI on the Blue Eddy devices does not show any DC input that's coming in from the batteries on this main screen. So if you're going to plug in extra solar panels, just be aware, it's not going to show on the screen. You're just, you're not going to see that input. It is coming in. You can see in the meter here, I'm now pulling twice as much as I was before, but on the screen, it's not going to show. Okay, how fast can we charge at different voltages? So you can see down here, my power supply is set to 12 volts. You can see up here, we're charging at about 100 watts-ish. So let's start cranking up the voltage here. So at about 14-ish volts, that's about what a car puts out. So if we were running the DC charging enhancer from a car output, we'd be looking at 120, 130 volts. Get up to about 18 volts. That's about what a solar panel is going to put out. Give it a minute to figure it out. And it's still pulling 10 amps over here. And we're getting about 160 watts. Let's keep going up to about 24, watt, 24 volts, excuse me. Which your more premium panels start putting out. We are still pulling 10 amps. Now up to 221 watts. Keep going up. We're now at about 30 volts. There we go. Now the fan kicks in. Now we're looking at 270, 280 watts. Up well, 35 volts. 340 watts. Let's get up to 40 volts. Forty volts, we're looking at about three hundred and sixty watts. Forty-five volts. Forty-five volts, we're at four hundred and forty watts. Fifty volts. 
50 volts, we're at 473, 480 roughly watts. 55 volts, still 473 watts. And let's get up to 60 volts. 60 volts is the official maximum. So there we're at 60 volts and we're pulling, interestingly, 462 watts, slightly less than we were before. There we go, it jumped back up, 474. So what's it look like overall? So I've graphed here, give me a second for the, uh, audio, for the fan to kick off here. There we go. I have graphed here the input voltage versus charging wattage from a DC charging enhancer. That's on this DC charging enhancer versus this specific AC200 max. So your mileage may be slightly different. The advertised maximum voltage, as you can see on the graph here, is 60 volts, but it keeps going beyond that. I didn't want to push it too much higher than about 70 volts because I don't want to blow up my DC charging enhancer, but it doesn't have a sharp cutoff like I would expect from other Bluetti MPPT controllers. But Bluetti does advertise the maximum voltage of this as 60 volts. So there is a little bit of wiggle room above that, but I would be very cautious about putting it above its maximum rated working voltage uh, for any extended period of time anyway. And you can hear at about 40 volts, the fan kicks on. So you want to feed these at least about 40 volts in order to maximize your uh, solar output. So if you're going to go pick solar panels for these, my recommendation based on the graph you're looking at here, you want at least 40 volts out of your solar panels, and that's volts at max power. So you're going to want to find a panel that has open circuit voltage of less than or equal to 60, but volts at max power of greater than 40. So now that we've taken a look at Blue Eddy's DC charging enhancer, what is that actually good for? The DC charging enhancer allows you to add more solar panels to your existing AC200, AC300, or AC500 series Blue Eddy solar generator. Well, why would you want to do that? Let's talk for practical matter. If the batteries that you have get you through the non-solar periods, in other words, it gets you through the night and you still have enough battery the next day, that tells you that you have enough battery capacity. If by the evening of the day, when you are running during daytime, you're not fully charged, that tells you that your solar panels are not bringing in enough power to max out the battery. Optimally, you want the battery full or nearly full right before sundown. So if you aren't having your battery refill during the day, that tells you you don't have enough solar input. If you have the built-in solar controller already maxed out on either the AC200, 300, or 500 series devices, the, solar, uh, the DC charging enhancer can allow you to bring in more solar power into your existing system so that you can have that battery full at the end of the day. If that sounds like something that you need, the DC charge enhancer is exactly the device for the job. The second thing you can do with it is these are for more van builds or camper builds or RV builds. If you want to have two DC inputs, again, AC200, AC300, AC500, if you want to have input from solar panels and also an input from the alternator and you want that to be a DC input, the DC charging enhancer will give you a second DC input. Now, you do need the device. You can't just run 12 volts straight into the AC input. You'll blow up the battery. But the DC charging enhancer will prevent that. So you can absolutely run DC into this and have two DC inputs. And that is a wonderful thing. So if that's what you need, that's what it's there for. So let me remind everybody, first off, I am not paid to make these videos. Blue Eddy does not know the content of these videos, nor do they create the videos themselves. I do work in technology, but I do not work in the solar generator industry. I make my money elsewhere. I make these videos because they're fun to make and people seem to like them. So if you like the video, hit a like or subscribe to the channel and have fun.